Hey, listen, uh, when you're talking about uh, the horrors uh, that happened over the weekend in Tucson, uh, you will probably never finish the stories, uh, individual stories of heroism, individual stories of insanity, individual stories, every facet of human life. And uh, we haven't really concentrated enough, at least on this program, in the last few days, um, on the legal aspects, and that's one of the reasons why it is we brought Monica Lindstrom in, former prosecutor, current defense attorney, with whom? I uh, with myself. Oh, see, that's the best deal. No suits, right? That's right. You just come in, you sit down at your desk, and you make decisions. That's right. Um, Judy Clark mm -hmm. made a decision. Uh, this is the woman who has defended the Unabomber, yeah. Uh, a number of other extremely controversial and provocative cases. Very. And now she is uh, at least volunteering to represent or has been hired to represent yes. uh, Jared Lochner, uh, the shooter, not the alleged shooter. The shooter. He's the guy who killed those people yes. and wounded the other people, right? I don't think there's any question about that. How do you defend that? Well, she's not looking to actually defend the shooting because the identity is set people saw him do it so that's not going to be an issue what she's going to be working on is reducing any type of sentence that he might get everybody's thinking the death penalty is going to be on the table and I think that it will be based on his actions I mean how could the prosecutors not ask for the death penalty I gotta jump in yes if you take a look at Jared mm -hmm. any of the pictures yes. much less the most recent one in non-legal terms Virtually everybody said, that's a loony. That is a raving loony. That's not a guy who's doing loony impersonations for right. a mugshot. Right. So how can you possibly even consider a death penalty for somebody who's incapable of being responsible at least for some actions? Well, the prosecutors have a certain amount of time that they have to ask for the death penalty. If they don't ask for it within that amount of time, then they can't ever ask for it down the road. So they can always ask for it at the beginning, and then if the psychiatrist comes back with a report that he's insane or the judge finds that he is, then they'll probably take that off the table because you can't send someone who's mentally insane you know, to jail with the death penalty. So that, that's how that will play out. They have to ask for it first because they won't get a second chance. Now, when it comes to Ms. Clark, she is a, a very well-respected defense attorney. She's not out there for the ego or for the media attention. In fact, she really doesn't enjoy the media attention. She's opposed to the death penalty, and she wants to make sure that this gentleman, I guess that's the wrong term to use, this defendant uh, gets the fairest trial possible. And that's what we want as taxpayers and as citizens because we don't want this case coming back. We don't want it appealed. We don't want it screwed up. We want someone who's competent, knows what they're doing, and that's what Judy Clark is. She's but she make can't sure. practice in Arizona, can she? She's she can. not licensed here. She can. She is licensed by the federal bar which goes oh, all across the country. Case. It's a federal case. And Arizona rules state that you should be um, admitted here as well. But she can ask the court for pro hoc vice status, which is just a Latin term. Basically, let me practice here for this one case. And it's already going to, I mean, she's already going to be allowed. The court's going to okay it. Is there a choice about venue, though? Is there a choice about what location? I mean, how can there be a jury if it, it becomes a jury trial? Right. Uh, how can you find a jury? How can you find a judge that has no prejudice? That's, that's the, the biggest issue that we're dealing with right now because the Tucson judges have already recused themselves. The federal judges, it's too emotional. They can't be impartial. And a judge was killed. Yes, yes. The federal district judge was killed down in Tucson. So the Phoenix Bar, the federal bar here in Phoenix, uh, the judges are going to likely recuse themselves also because they all have personal ties. They have those emotions. And they can't be impartial. In fact, uh, Ms. Clark has even said that she's going to ask that the all the judges in Arizona, federal judges, recuse themselves so another federal district judge will take over the case. She's also going to ask that the U.S. Attorney's Office here in Phoenix recuse themselves because they practiced in front of him. And in fact, the federal public defender bar, the attorneys here, asked the court to appoint her because they often appeared in front of a judge role. So they don't, they're not sure if there's a conflict there. So everybody's working hard to make sure that this trial goes fair and goes on schedule and that it never comes back.
can it be ever held in Arizona? I think it, it could be if you could find an impartial jury for the state action. The federal action, I don't, I don't, I think it's going to get moved because there's going to be a different judge, and it just makes sense to have it all happen in the same place instead of having that judge constantly travel. Plus, it's going to be difficult to find an impartial jury here. While, while I eloquently use the term loony, uh, uh, when it comes to the legal definition of, mm -hmm. of insanity, so this is my defense, yes. uh, not guilty or not responsible for the crime because of insanity. But, but medical insanity isn't defined the same way as courtroom insanity. No. Uh, lay people think he's crazy, and I do too. Uh, but the legal definition of insanity is very different. And just to make a point, a uh, federal case and an Arizona case. In Arizona, he can be found uh, guilty but insane. If he's found guilty but insane, he'll go to a mental hospital to try to be rehabilitated. If he's ever rehabilitated and comes to sanity, he'll go to jail for it. So that's a little different than uh, the federal and most of the states in the country. And that's not double jeopardy uh, that is being tried or sentenced for the same crime twice? No, no, because there's only one trial. He's only being tried once, but the jury finds that he's guilty but insane. So just because you're insane, why should you get off of a punishment? Arizona made sure that that's not going to happen. So if you fake it and play it really well and act like you're insane and fool everybody and then go to the state hospital and then two years later you're released, you're not off scot-free. Arizona says, huh, uh you're going to jail now because you're going to serve your punishment. Uh, uh, listen, let's continue to pursue this insanity thing in another uh, uh, facet, okay? Monica Lindstrom, the Reverend Wacko and the Kansas Crazies, uh, the, uh, uh, these people, uh, who are still insisting on demonstrating not just at any memorial service, which right. would be horrible, but the nine-year-old. Right. Uh, um, they should be ashamed of themselves. Well, well, they should have been ashamed of themselves <laughs> every time they appeared at a, 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 a military memorial service or Barry Goldwater's memorial service. Yep. But regardless, right. that's all they do is they travel around the country and offend people. Yep. Is it an abridgment of their... Uh, right to free speech to Not keep them even removed no right now the bill that was signed by the governor and passed by the Arizona legislature legislature is 300 feet from the funeral and that's not really very far if you think about it Length that could of a be, football field if even I mean gosh when you you know I mean it's it's really short so they still have the opportunity to speak and say whatever they want but the the greater good or the good for these families and for the state has won out and said you need to stay back so the government is allowed to abridge free speech or to put conditions on it as long as it's reasonable as long as the law allows it and in this case it definitely does in other states such as Ohio have the same law so um, the I, I guess the head of the church said that he wasn't going to come and pick it he's just going to talk on the radio <laughs> but others are still going to come while uh, we have criticized some decisions of the state legislature and this governor our hats off to all of you for making that decision, signing that law.